Access provided by PlayStation. All right, The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered added this new roguelike mode called No Return, and I was able to put about 30 hours into it before release. So if you're trying to work your way through No Return for the first time, or trying to survive on the higher difficulties like Grounded, this is where you want to be. I'm going to break down the main playable characters, their loadouts and skills, while ranking each of them by my own opinion on their overall potency in this mode. Now let's begin. I'm Alex, and here we go. Each character falls into either the Ellie faction or the Abby faction, and both sides have their own unique home base. Beat three encounters with Ellie unlocks Dina, three encounters with Dina gets you Jesse, three with Jesse unlocks Tommy, and three encounters with Tommy unlocks Joel. Starting with Abby, finishing three encounters unlocks Lev, three with Lev unlocks Yara, three encounters with Yara gets you Mel, and three with Mel unlocks Manny. Ellie is a well-rounded little murder ball and viable for a large variety of playstyles. Her unique trait grants a 50% increase to supplement gain, those tasty pills you pop to unlock skills. Ellie starts a run with six rounds in the semi-auto pistol, one Molotov, the crafting recipe to make more Molotovs, and is the only character to start with two separate upgrade branches. The extra branch you start with is chosen at random each run, but this allows her to be the only character able to have four separate upgrade paths at once. Her main upgrade path is Perseverance, with the first skill improving the radius of Molotovs by 50% mostly useful for countering the infected. The next skill she gets increases healing kit potency by 50%, and the final one, Endure, lets you survive death once when, well, you should have died. Overall, I would put Ellie in the high S tier in comparison to the rest of the cast. Having four upgrade branches to build off of makes her pretty strong in the later half of a run, if you spend those supplements wisely. Or if you simply just want to burn stuff, play Ellie. Side note, you can change the default camera setting from this to this, which gives you an easy peripheral advantage. In accessibility, then motion sickness, crank up the field of view and the extra camera distance setting they tucked in here. Abby is a close combat melee focused carnage machine with some regenerative properties, like an even more jacked Wolverine. Abby comes with the unique trait heal on melee kill. When you take someone down with a melee attack, you recuperate about half of a health segment. This applies to kills with a melee weapon, your arm cannons, or stealth takedowns. Abby starts a run with six bullets in the military pistol, a four durability unupgraded hammer, the crafting recipe to upgrade melee weapons, and the brawler upgrade branch. The first unlockable skill gives you health back for individual melee attacks, about a quarter of a health segment back for non-fatal hits. The next unlock gives you momentum, providing a roughly 4 second buff after you perform a melee strike attack, guaranteeing your next melee attack will also be a strike. Strike attacks are the instant finishers you can do on stunned or surprised enemies. This can let you do a quick chain of melee finishers in a row, and even some bosses can be insta-killed by the momentum effect. You can easily set up enemies for a strike attack with a bottle or brick throw, or you can pop a shot in their leg to set up for a strike takedown. The last unlock will extend the duration of the momentum buff to roughly 7 seconds, so you have a little bit more time in between kills. Since melee combat is so important for Abby, try to use your unupgraded melee weapons all the way up till they have one durability left, and then upgrade them. This will let you get more uses out of a single weapon, since upgrading them also fully repairs their durability. I also recommend looking forward on the level select board to spot where the close quarters upgrade path is, this symbol. That gives you an extra durability segment to upgrade in melee weapons, 25% extra total health, and the endure skill saving you from death once. Overall, I would put Abby in the top S tier category as well, perfectly suited if you're trying to tackle the higher difficulties. The regular health regeneration is a huge bonus, especially on the grounded difficulty where you can't see your current HP, and the insta-kill momentum effect can make many situations just flat out easier. Dina is an explosives expert with a focus on crafting. 
She starts with six bullets in the revolver, one of every crafting resource, and the recipes to make trap mines and stun bombs. Her main upgrade branch is double craft, with the first skill turning stun bombs into smoke bombs. This is essentially the same effect as the stun bomb, but the smoke makes it easier to assassinate people while obscuring all the fun you're having in there. Her next skill lets you craft two smoke bombs at a time and raises the cap to four. The next one increases the blast radius of trap mines, and the final skill lets you craft two at once and hold a total of four. I have a shaky relationship with trap mines because more than once my run immediately ended due to my own bombs detonating. Overall, I would put Dina in the B tier since trap mines can be pretty hit and miss in this mode. However, the smoke bombs are pretty useful, so I recommend focusing those when you're playing as her. Lev is a precise archer, requiring your aim to be on point, unless you're using explosive arrows. Lev starts with two rounds in the semi-auto pistol, a bow that has the draw speed upgrade installed, four arrows, the crafting recipe, and innately has a slightly improved listen mode. Enemies are highlighted a little clearer, but on grounded difficulty listen mode is entirely disabled. Lev's upgrade branch is archery, letting you craft three arrows at a time. The bow really grew on me, and it can easily become one of the best weapons in this mode, since it's very strong and silent and you can pick your arrows back up to save on resources. The next skill lets you craft explosive arrows, and the final one lets you craft two at a time and raises the cap to four. Explosive arrows tend to turn things that were one part into numerous flying parts. Overall, I would put Lev in the A category, almost hitting the S tier if not for the listen mode improvement, not really doing a whole lot at all. I recommend you look forward to spot the precision upgrade branch when you're playing as Lev. That tightens your accuracy while moving and aiming, lets you hold your breath and move faster while aiming. You move pretty slowly when drawing the bow, but this helps to counter that. Also, I found that my aim improved when I turned the aiming ramp power scale down a bit in the options. Personally, that feels a lot more natural to me. Jesse is a combination of silent tactician meets demolition crew. Jesse gains 30% more currency than the rest of the characters and can unlimited reroll the shop. You start a run with six bullets in the military pistol, a silencer, a recipe to make more silencers, a pipe bomb, and a recipe to make those as well. Jesse's upgrade branch is Gorilla, which starts with improved silencers, increasing their uses from three shots to five. The next skill is improved pipe bombs, increasing their blast radius by 50%, and the last lets you craft three pipe bombs at a time and carry a total of six. That's a pretty generous amount, since these are essentially delete buttons to whatever you throw them at. Overall, I would put Jesse in the A tier, because the extra currency and shop options let you really fine tune your loadout. Also, silencers and pipe bombs give you great options for stealth and the opposite of stealth. Yara is the ice climbers of the bunch, being a tag team duo with Lev. When playing as Yara, you'll always be accompanied by Lev, providing additional combat support. You start a run with six bullets in the semi-auto pistol and the ally upgrade branch. The first skill makes Lev fight more aggressively and kill more often. On the lower difficulties, Lev can be a big help, but beware, if a companion dies, your run will immediately end, regardless of how healthy you might be. The next skill you get makes enemies slightly more clear in listen mode, and last will make Lev fight even more aggressively than before. Overall, I would put Yara in the B tier, since having a companion at all times can sometimes assist, but sometimes also can need saving. Honestly, I'm conflicted on this. Yara could be A tier, but it really depends on what difficulty you're playing at. Tommy is a long-range sniper that never figured out the dodge move. Tommy is innately more resistant to melee damage, but cannot use the dodge mechanic at all. He starts with a fully upgraded unique sniper rifle with four rounds and three bullets in the military pistol. He gets the marksman upgrade branch that starts with 100% increase to aim stability and accuracy. 
You need to place your shots well with Tommy because you can't craft any bullets for his sniper rifle. During an encounter, you'll have to rely on chance, scavenging them from containers or from corpses. The next skill will give you the ability to hold your breath, which will further tighten your aim when you click in the analog stick. And his last skill will increase your movement speed while aiming. Overall, I would almost put Tommy in the B tier since not having a dodge can put you in some bad situations, but I'm going to go with A tier because when you have bullets for a sniper rifle, it's pretty much easy mode. I also like the fact that he starts with the upgrade branch that tightens your accuracy and increases movement speed when you're aiming. Mel is a speedy healer character that loves to not be at full HP. After using a health kit, Mel gets a roughly 8 second speed boost which can be used to flee to safety or used more offensively. This also applies to the questionable apocalypse snacks you grab scattered around the map. Mel starts a run with 3 bullets in the revolver and 2 health kits. Mel gets the healing upgrade branch with the first skill letting you craft 2 health kits at once and also hold a total of 4. The next skill will recover some of the alcohol and rag resource after you use a health kit. Both of those resources can then be put back into crafting more health kits. And the last skill will raise your total max health by 25%. Overall, I would personally put Mel in the B tier. Having a lot of health kits can be useful if you plan on getting shot up a bunch, but I didn't really find the movement speed boost from healing to really provide that much of an advantage. Joel is a Shiv manufacturing sneak attack pro with a focus on close range takedowns. Joel's unique property is that he comes with a custom revolver, which is fully maxed out with upgrades from the start. He also has increased damage mitigation against melee attacks, but just like Tommy, never took the class on dodging, so he can't do it at all. He starts a run with one Shiv, the Shiv crafting recipe, a three durability upgraded club, an extra sidearm holster, and that fully upgraded revolver with six bullets, but it can load in a max of 12, somehow. His Shiv upgrade path starts with a 100% speed increase to stealth kills, while making them slightly lower profile. The next one lets him craft 3 Shivs at a time and hold a total of 6. Shivs let you silently assassinate people faster or let you instantly escape from being grabbed. And the last skill will let you move around and reposition 50% faster when hugging someone. Overall, I would put Joel in the A category, thanks to his faster stealth takedowns and his fully upgraded sidearm which saves you weapon parts to pump into other weapons. Not being able to dodge is the only thing keeping Joel out of the range of S tier for me. Manny is a tanky powerhouse with some of the best starting gear. Manny's unique trait gives him a 50% increase to parts gain used to upgrade weapons and a 150% increase to total max health. He starts with 7 rounds in the semi-auto rifle, the recipe to make ammo for it, and a hunting pistol with 3 shots. That's all really good stuff, but the downside, Manny is the only character that doesn't get the recipe for crafting health kits. Not a total deal breaker, you'll just have to make sure to stock up on health kits in between rounds at the shop or hope you scavenge some during the level. His upgrade branch is Munitions, giving a skill that lets you craft ammo for the hunting pistol, with the next increasing the amount you can make from 2 to 3 at a time. The hunting pistol is very strong, especially for a sidearm, and it can pierce through multiple enemies, so line them up. The next skills only apply if you happen to get the shotgun during a run, but if you do, this lets you craft incendiary shells for it, and with the final skill, make three at a time, holding a total of six. These will code an area and fire, and apply some damage over time if the target happens to be lucky enough or unlucky enough to live through the initial blast. I like to double down on Manny's innate 150% increased health pool and seek out the close quarters upgrade branch which provides an additional 25% max health on top of that. This will make him extra tanky and be able to sponge up a lot of damage even on the higher difficulties. Overall, I would easily throw Manny into the S tier. His focus on raw straight in your face damage, the higher health pool, and additional parts gain make for a potent combo. Just make sure to buy those health kits when they're available and top off your health before heading back in. 
All right, that's the no return mode and its main roster of characters. But let me know down in the comments which one you think comes with the best kit. By the way, if you're curious how I changed the HUD color during this video, go into accessibility, magnification and visual aids, then HUD color. You can have it yellowish, green, blue, red, or defaulted to white. Now a big thanks to PlayStation for sending this my way, and if you have any direct questions for me, hit me up on X at BoomstickAlex. Thanks for checking this out today, good luck and have fun.